It's a danger zone. You in the middle of a world only a banger home. Matthew, how old are you, Matthew? 35. 35? Yeah. Okay, tell me a little about yourself, Matthew. Um, well, I became a heroin addict originally through um uh because of uh, a doctor yeah. originally. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was born in eighty seven. Okay. So I grew up in the Oxycontin era, you okay. know? And all our friends were doing pills. We didn't realize that those pills, even though they were coming from a pharmacy, they might not have been coming from our doctor. Right. We figured, we didn't realize they were heroin pills. You know what I mean? And the reason why things are today, like you, this is the biggest open air drug market in the world, in the country, mm -hmm. Kensington. Maybe in the world. It it's could the be world, the world, okay. you know? But I know for a fact it is, it is the country. And if you think for one second that if the Philadelphia, Philadelphia police didn't want to shut down Kensington, they couldn't, that's insanity. They right. want this to be how it is. And for the exact reason is the prison systems are a business, the rehabs are a business, the fucking halfway houses, recovery houses, uh, all those things are a for-profit industry. And the more people they put in jail, the more money the local, state, and federal government makes, you know? like. 35 years ago, Portugal, which is right next to Spain, was just like America, where they criminalized drug addicts and they sent them to prison for being addicts. And if you sell, if you sold drugs, you were getting a state prison sentence. And it wasn't working. The community got together and they're like, yo, this is not working. We gotta change the system because it's broken, right? So they did a social experiment where they legalized every drug from cocaine to amphetamine and everything in between. And what they did was they took the money that America uses for the criminal justice system and they funneled it into programs for housing and job opportunities and um, education programs for addicts. And instead of putting hurdles up in front of addicts the way that we do here in America, you know what I mean? Like I got put on probation in 2013 mm. and because of violating probation, because I'm a drug addict and I can't piss, pass a piss test. Right. I did more years in jail than my man did for robbing a bank. Mm. I did four years in prison for one bag of heroin. Wow. Right? Through violating, well, really for violating probation. But you know what I mean? Like, um, the American Medical Association classifies drug addiction as an illness, as a disease of the brain. No other disease do they criminalize people for having it. They don't send diabetics to prison for being sick. Right. Or people with heart disease, they don't lock them up because they're sick. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't rob to get money. I don't steal to get money. I, you know what I mean? I don't trick. I don't. I have ways to get money that are legal. You know what I mean? So the only drug technically, I mean, the only crime I technically do is buying illegal substances. You know what I mean? Right. But back to Portugal, right? 35 years later, nobody in Portugal has got together and been like, yo, this isn't working. We want to go back to how things were before, before where like how it was, you know, and when things were illegal, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? And um, what happened was the black market completely dissolved. So the drug overdoses went down by like two thirds because now the drugs are being regulated by the government quality control systems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not being cooked in bathtubs by these Puerto Ricans that can't speak English mixing up batches of fentanyl and horse trank which mm -hmm. is doing shit like this to people wow. and that's what that is it's horse trank but it's not it's not from the xylazine right. what it is is right it's how they're getting it into the country right. and this is how they're doing it if you're an American citizen that goes to Mexico and you die in Mexico your family can pay to have your body shipped back to America well, they have their family come over that they're old and close to death and they die in Mexico and they stitch inside of their corpse bottles of xylazine, this, this trank, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And the decomposition process contaminates the, um, the bottles of xylazine because it's only wrapped in cellophane, you know what I mean? Right. And that's what's causing all this. That's why like some people get it and some people don't because it's not the trank itself that's doing it. It's the like contaminated batches or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, and um, 
people aren't robbing and stealing to get money for drugs because you can get it at CVS Pharmacy instead of on Tip and Cambria, you know what I mean? Like, the problem in America is the system. When you're constantly told you're a bad person for being an addict and you're a bad person for being, uh, you know, a, a, a scumbag or whatever, you believe it after a while, you know what I mean? It sinks in and you lose hope. I don't feel like it's worth going to college and pursuing a career because now I have a criminal record. Right? Yeah, education was the highest level education. I went to college. I went okay. to one year of college, mm -hmm. but I can't, I didn't pursue a degree. I was going to go to become a medical doctor mm -hmm. at one point, you know, but that's totally out of the question because I can't get a DEA license at this point. Yeah. You know, but now, I mean, granted, you can still get a decent job as a felon and a drug addict, but it's going to be manual labor. You know what I mean? You're going to break right. your back every day for, you know what I mean? It's not like you're completely shit out of luck. Right. But in Portugal, what they, they, they give, they give you, what they do is if you choose to be an addict, they tell you, we'll support you just like any other citizen of our country. And we'll give you every opportunity that everybody else gets. And we'll love you and support you just like anybody else. If you want to get out of your addiction, right. there's the option to go to rehab. It's still that still exists to get out if you want it, but it's not forced upon anybody. Number one, through the probation system, and they don't put hurdles in front of people that just further spiral the fucking down the downfall. You know? Can I ask you something? Yeah. You speak a lot on Pers Persico. Are you Persicese at all? No, no, but um, how do you know much about the, that them? Actually, there's a, I learned about it through a TED talk. Okay. Which I don't know if you know what TED talk is. It's um, it's like TED stands for the educational department. That it's through like universities or whatever. Okay. They do videos on YouTube or whatever. Okay. But um, it, it's um, I mean, it's one of the only countries in the world that legalizes every drug, and you know from from amphetamine to heroin you know right. what i mean and everything in between right and the, the reason why they don't do that in america is because our system is set and it's not broken our prison systems especially the private prison systems like cca Corrections corporation america and geo group and uh, george w hill these for-profit prisons number one they're the most dangerous prisons to be in because they're not run by the government They're not run by the, by, by the state, you know, right. they're, they're not supervised by the state the way they should be. So they're more dangerous than going to like Camp Hill or whatever, you know, a state prison that's not a private prison. You know what I mean? Right. But you, and then there's like Keithy Commissary Network, right? Where they charge up to a dollar for a fucking five cent pack of ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. And Keithy is owned by the wife of Jeb Bush. Mm. You know, like it's total corruption at the finest level and why if it, if it ain't broke don't fix it you know it's not about trying to save the addicts it's not about trying to rehabilitate the criminals and stop the black market and the shootings and shit like that right there's two serial killers out here right now that are actively hunting in kensington mm. and nobody's talking about it you see all these missing person flyers hanging up right that's what that's why, why. Why you feel like nobody's stopping this or, or caring to stop the two serial killers? Because I'll tell you exactly why I think it is. What? The police don't put as much investigation in. When drug dealers kill drug dealers, yeah. they say, all right, they're doing our work for us, so fuck them. Okay. You know what I mean? And when addicts die, it's like we're subhuman parasites on the, on the community, so fuck them anyway. Right. But if I was some rich white lady in... Rittenhouse Square that got killed in my apartment right. in the middle of the night. You better believe I, that'd be on the news every single night, right. fucking seven days a week until that person's found. You know what I mean? Like, it's total uh, class discrimination. It used to be racism, right. but it's not racist anymore. It's like a class war, man. Like, the rich stay rich, the poor, poor stay poor, poor, and they want to keep their boot on the back of our neck as much as possible. Right. Like, and if you don't think these fucking cops are dirty as shit, I can give you a perfect example, right? Sergeant Joseph Bologna of the 24th, 25th Strike Force was arrested. Well, no, he wasn't. He was just arrested 
read, well, hold on, let me back, let me tell the full story, right? He was working as a, a sergeant of the of the strike force in Kensington, okay. and they were raiding these bodegas that sell those clear plastic bags that the blue wax bags are sold in. Right. Technically, it's illegal to sell them. It's a misdemeanor, okay. right? Okay. Right. So they would raid these bodegas that are owned by these Chinese immigrants that keep cash because they don't believe they don't trust their government where they come from. Right. So they keep all cash money. They would first boot the door in, and the first thing they do is disable the camera system. They would rob the store blind. They would charge the store owners with a misdemeanor, mm. and they would get released at the district with ROR, and then the cops wouldn't even come to court, and the, the case would get dropped. But wow. now, because the camera system was disabled, they got no way to prove it. But one person had their security system backed up through their home security network, right? right? So they did a daily, they, they released the video feed to the daily news and exposed this guy, right. Sergeant Joseph Bologna. You know mm. what the Philadelphia police did? What? This was back when Seth Williams was the district attorney, who mm -hmm. was corrupt as shit and ultimately fired and taken away as, and replaced by Larry Krasner. Um, they took him off the strike force, which is technically a demotion, uh -huh. but he got an increase in rank from a sergeant to a staff inspector, so he got an increase in pay, and he was in charge now of the bike patrol that does the protests down in Center City. So. George Floyd gets killed. The riots happen in Philadelphia, and so and now uh, Staff Inspector Joseph Bologna at City Hall decides to beat the shit out of some white kid protesting for Black Lives Matter on camera with a nightstick because he didn't back up fast enough when he told him to back up. Right. He was peacefully protesting his American right to protest for equality and you know police brutality right. and this dude beats the shit out of him with a nightstick because he didn't back up fast enough right. you know what I'm saying now Larry Krasner pressed charges on him and arrested him and the fraternal order for the police which is the police union paid his bail then that dude didn't do, that dude do a single second in his cell he went into the district got fingerprinted picture taken released 10 minutes later Wow I don't know any of you if you've ever been arrested so I got a question. A lot different. Can I ask you this? Hmm? Would you tell a young girl or guy that's just starting to rip and run the streets, you know, 16, 17, 18? Oh my what God. advice would you give them? The youth. I would tell them that that this is literally, you are selling your soul when you become an addict. Okay. You know, this is, I made the mistake of trusting a doctor back in the day. You know, but now I know better that doctors are glorified drug dealers. You know, right. they were drug dealers. Right. But anybody, like normal people, don't have the desire to stick a needle in their arm to get high. You know what I mean? Right. Like they just don't have that urge. My dad's not an addict. Right. He's addicted to work. That's his addiction. He, addictions, like right. human yeah. nature. People are addicted to eating, gambling, sex, food money power right some addictions are rewarded right. and some are criminalized like for addiction if, uh the addiction of power for instance like a ceo of a major fortune 500 company his addiction is re rewarded right. you know what i mean he's praised for being you know super productive and you know super into his job and all that stuff and getting things accomplished instead we're thrown in jail because all my addiction even though I don't rob and steal to support my habit, apparently, even though I'm only hurting myself, right? You know, but there's there's something to say, something to that that what makes me feel the need to stick a drug into my body, and I'm not comfortable in my own skin, you know, where I can't be content sober, and as. I don't have the answer to that question. I, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. I, I mean, hopefully one day I will. Okay. Because I know that there's something wrong, but everybody out here that's getting high, if they being honest with you, will tell you that. There's something inside of them that makes them feel broken from the average person. Like they were either abused as a child or they were just born different. They felt different right from the gun bust. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's just it could be. A, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't have the. Are you homeless out here, man? Um, 
kind of, but not really. Like I have a house to go home to, but okay. I stay out here to save my commute to work time every day as a professional junkie. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? But uh, I just want to let you know, man. You know? I thank you for the talk. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for the advice. It. Get it out there. Get it out there you for know, you. Maybe it'll change your people here, you know? Absolutely. God Absolutely. Will, That's what it's all about, man. God yeah. bless. We're going to be praying for you, man. This was the worst decision I made in my life. And some da some some damage can't be undone. Some damage can't be fixed, you know? All-time media. All-time media. Thank you.